Hello and welcome back to Algebra, Chapter 4, Section 4. We're talking about scatter plots and lines of fit. Just a quick and easy lesson here. A little bit of a review of something you should already know. All right, a scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two data sets. So, for example, here, this shows, um, this is plotted different smoothies, 10 different smoothies, the amount of sugar and the amount of calories. Okay, so now you might have questions about this. We're comparing two sets of data, sugar versus calories here. And they might ask you how many calories are in the smoothie that contains 56 grams of sugar. So we're going to go to see where is 56 grams of sugar, and that's halfway between 48 and 58. And that is going to be this dot right here. And that's 270. So you would say that's 270 calories. How many calories? 270 calories. That was supposed to say calories. C-A-L. Come on. Cal. All right. Uh, next. How many grams of sugar are in the smoothie that contains 320 calories? All right, so now we're going up calories, and we're going to read here 320. Yep, that's this one right there. That point, that is 70 grams of sugar. So 70 G, 70 grams. What tends to happen to the number of calories as the number of grams of sugar increases? So the more sugar you have in a smoothie, what happens with the calories? Well, the more sugar is in it, what happens to the calories? The more calories. So as the amount of sugar increases, the amount of calories increases. Increases. It increases. Boom. All right. So when we're looking at scatter plots, when we're analyzing them, we talk about correlations. Uh, is there a correlation? between x and y. Correlation is a relationship between the data sets. So whatever we're measuring on the x-axis and the y-axis, if as one goes up or increases, the other goes up or increases. So we always read a graph from left to right. So we always read this way. So we're always going to look at as x increases, as x increases. Okay, what does y do? Well, as x increases here, y increases. We call that a positive correlation as they both increase. One's going up, the other's going up. If one's going up, x always increases, because we read left to right. y decreases, we're going down here, then that is a negative correlation. And if you can't say anything particular here, as x increases, you can't say y is going up or down, we say that has no correlation. All right, that's just all over the place. All right, so look at these, analyze them. Age of a person and the number of vehicles they have owned. Can we see any kind of correlation? Is it a positive, negative, or no correlation? So uh, 22, 23-year-old has four vehicles. Um, looks like somewhere in the range from 30 to 40. There are some people who've owned six or five, and then some who've owned only one or two. And then... At 50, someone who's owned 7, but then at 55, someone who's owned 3. There's no particular trend up or down here. There's no correlation for this one. This one's a little more clear. Average daily temperature and coats sold per day, which makes, makes sense. The warmer it is, the fewer coats they will sell. People aren't buying coats in summer. That's why they have an end-of-summer clearance, right? Because people don't buy a lot of swimming trunks and flip-flops in winter. So this is a negative correlation. As x increases, y goes down. Okay, and then um, the other thing that we will talk about when we're analyzing, looking at a scatter plot, is when we look at this trend, we can see, okay, somehow in this direction here, this line goes down that way, right? Now, notice that line doesn't necessarily go through any of those points. 
but it's close to most of those points. We call this a, and put this in your notes, this is a line of fit. That line of fit, this right here, is called a line of fit. Okay, that line wasn't there, I drew it there, um, kind of estimating somewhere in between all these points, close to most of them. Now, if I want to find the slope of that line of fit, I don't pick necessarily any of the data points because they're not on that line. I would pick two points that are on that line, like right here, 35 and 60, and right here, 70 and 10. So if I have 35 and 60 is one of my points that is on the line, that's pretty much on the line, and then here I have 70 and 10. Now I can find the slope, if I want to write an equation for the line of fit, I can find the slope between these, that's uh, down 50 minus 50, and this one here is up 35. So 50 over 35, negative 50 over 35, we could simplify that. If we divide by 5, we would get negative 10 over 7. So down 10 over 7, right? Down 10 over 7, right there. Okay, that's the slope. And then you could put it in point slope form or slope intercept form, whichever one works better for you. I'll use slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Okay, I'm going to plug in negative 10 over 7 for m. x is 70. Pick this point, 70. And we are trying to find b. We don't know that. And then plug in 10 for y. Okay, 7 and 70 cancel out. Leaves me with 10 here. 10 times 10 is 100, so negative 100 plus b is equal to 10. Add 100 to each side, and b is equal to 110. Okay, so this would cross at 110. Okay, so the equation of this would be y is equal to negative 10 over 7 x plus 110. Now, if you look at this graph up here and you continue this line, you say, well, that's going to cross at uh, 67 or 68. Careful. This right here means we are missing data. Okay, this graph actually continues. This, is, this right here, the, this is broken right there, right? The y-axis is actually over here. So that line keeps going up until it hits at 110. Okay, so careful, that graph can be a little bit deceptive if you're trying to find the y-intercept from this line on the graph. Okay, but there you have it in slope-intercept form. Very easy, or you could use point-slope form if you so prefer. There you have it, lots of fun. That's all we'll have for today. Check in again next time.